Hello YouTube land, my name is Castle Caden and today we are playing Minecraft. We're going to be going over on how to actually use a redstone comparator. This is a new item that's going to be introduced into Minecraft 1.4.7. You, you can actually test this out right now if you download the uh, 13W01A, which is 2013 week 1 testing development version. First and foremost, if you haven't actually seen my previous Nether Quartz tutorial, I suggest you take a look at that because that's kind of important. If you do know about Nether Quartz already, just, you know, follow along. First and foremost, we're actually going to be showing you how to create a comparator, and that is quite simply like this. We will want to have three redstone torches up here. We will want your Nether Quartz right down here. And then three stone. This will create your redstone comparator. Now. This is going to be going over something similar, which actually was showcased on the Minecraft uh, wiki. However, okay, so basically this output from the center right here is your A output. This on the, along the side is your B output or input. And this is your C, which is your output. So these two are inputs, A input, B input, and this is your output. So what it is is, is that if we have, I'm just going to set this up really, really quickly. Okay, so this is your A input. I set this up along the second string here. So it's actually a longer strain before it hits this comparator. This one is along the first one that hits. So this one is actually stronger. Seeing as this signal is stronger, this signal does not push through. Now, if I were to unclick it, you can see that this is already different. Now that this is the only signal shown, this will go straight through and nothing to worry about. If I were to do any of these, it wouldn't matter. The only time where it matters is if the B input, which is again this one, is stronger than the A input. So just keep that in mind. So for example, if I were to use this one, I can either use this input or this input to block it. If it's matched or equal to the input power as the other one, it will not do anything. So do keep that in mind. This can actually be used for quite a few things, especially when compared and utilizing things like the daylight sensor. <laughs> you guys are gonna have a lot of fun once you actually start getting a little bit more creative with those and more comfortable. We're gonna be going over a separate example over here. So again, this is the A input and this is the B input. So if I were to turn this on, the A input is the only current, so there is an output. If I were to turn this one on, it wouldn't do anything because this is the equal distance from the comparator that this one is, right? So one, two, three blocks, one, two, three blocks. So this one will not do anything. If I were to turn this one on, this one does superimpose itself onto the comparator because it's actually closer to the comparator than input A. And again, these won't matter because they're a little further away, but the comparator has a separate feature. It has something called the subtraction mode. So let's actually remove that and actually set up subtraction mode. What it'll do is, it'll be interesting actually, as you can see, this goes right to the very end. I'm actually going to create a few more strains just so you can actually see this a little bit better. As you can see, this goes right to the very end and it still has power. So this is actually the last one, so I'll just cut that one off. Okay, so it goes throughout all of its blocks, right? Let's say I wanted to subtract the amount from here. As you can see, this one definitely turns it off because of the fact that this one is so close. However, what will happen if I do it a little further away? What's this? there's still something turned on here. And this is what subtraction mode is. The further away this input B is, let's try this one and you know, guess what'll happen? <laughs> A lot more strains will be active, but as you can see here, the power cuts off. So that's an interesting feature with the subtraction mode, which you can definitely utilize different things, especially the daylight sensors. This could actually be quite useful in comparison to that. However, here is something else that I learned actually while testing this out. I'm actually going to switch back to daylight. Oops, there we go. Back to daylight. 
here is something that I found out while playing around with trying to figure out what I can do with this. This is in subtraction mode, keep that in mind. But actually, I'll turn it off and actually just show you, this does nothing. However, when subtraction mode is enabled, and I'll, again, I'll show you why this happens, is because of the delay here, what will happen is it'll power, unpower, power, unpower, right? And because of subtraction mode, it actually makes the difference. So this creates an efficient toggable pulser right there. It's very compact. So I might actually update my um, automated clock because here you can also make it slower. So quite like the one that's just redstone repeaters, this is completely toggable and customizable. It's great. Keep in mind that this update is for Minecraft 1.4.7, so don't go looking for it unless that's already out. At the time of this tutorial, it is not released. I'm using the uh, weekly development version. And again, that was released on the first week, actually, of uh, January 2013. So, quite fun, eh? These are the new blocks. We have the comparator and the redstone daylight sensor, which is in the annotations above, as well as the requirement for those is the nether quartz ore, which is also in the annotations above. So if you want to take a look at that, feel free. And uh, yeah, I think this goes over the majority of the tutorial on uh, how to use the comparator. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you guys have learned something. And, you know, until next time, have fun.